G'day, everyone. Welcome to episode, I believe, 148 of the Trademate Sports Betting Podcast. Joining me today, as you can see, the beautiful man to my right, pro sports better Neil Shah. How are you, mate? Very good, mate. Yeah, how are you, Elise? Oh, mate, couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. And just because I'm so excited about what we're about to go through, I've never it's been... It's really I'm, exciting stuff. I it's... love learning. I love learning. <laughs> 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 I've never been so curious in my life, and this is this is going to be groundbreaking stuff. And I mean, I might be taking the piss, but I think this is groundbreaking stuff, at least for myself, mate. At least for myself. I mean, no, it'll definitely be in stuff that I've kind of learned along the way, and I'm by no means an expert. Or you know, anyone watching, feel free to add in the comments any other ideas or better software that you found for stuff like this, or any other good sort of tips and tricks. Um, hopefully this will be useful for you know a lot of people. So um, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get into it. yeah. So overall, this is going to be, I assume, mate, quite useful for professionals, semi-professionals, anyone that wants to take their betting uh, seriously. Like this isn't for your you know general punter on the street. I mean, you'd never have to go to this extent to try and get a bet down, or um, you know, of uh, you know setting up accounts, all that kind of stuff. That's not really for important for those kind of people. But for people that are, um, yeah, want to take their betting, gambling more seriously, then this is stuff that it might be a bit dull at times, but um, but it could it could really, really help you in your in your pursuit to uh, become a, you know, good sports better. Um, mate, I'm going to leave <clears throat> the floor to you to kick things off. Maybe just start off with like a, a brief summary of, of what we're going to go through today and why it is important. Yeah, so basically we're, we're going to be talking about um, setting up accounts, how to stay under the radar with, with bookmakers. We're, basically, it's all kind of assuming that you're at the stage where you know, you're, you're, you're doing well with your betting, you're getting accounts restricted or closed down, you're no longer able to use use your own accounts so um you know you're going to have to rely on sort of friends and family to do it for you um we, we will assume that they're all your friends and family and people you know um and yeah it's basically sort of good ways to to do this um to try and prolong your accounts as long as possible um and you know again give yourself kind of fighting chance of of making that value count and actually turning a profit you know before you, you get these shut, uh, accounts shut down so um lots of kind of techy stuff i'll try and explain as best as i can i'm not the greatest with with, with tech and uh um again let, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look through and, and see what we can kind of find out but i think there'll definitely be at least a few pointers for everyone or a few little things maybe you haven't tried or software you you don't know that you can kind of give a go and, um, you know, it, it, it won't harm your effort, basically. All right, mate. Um, let's just kick things off and talk a little bit about, um, yeah, I guess trying to stay under the radar of book take, uh, bookmakers, sorry, um, you know, staying undetected for as long as possible and how this uh, whiz-bang technology can help that. Yeah, so, um, I mean, first off, um i'm sure people are aware now every time you kind of open up your your gmail or you know your, your email you might have been looking at something or you know try shopping for something and then you suddenly start getting all these ads or on facebook or on, on google and it's kind of you know or you might even be watching something on your tv that has happened to me and it just it's kind of scary sometimes sort of how much companies uh use data uh, you know, how much information they have on you. And a lot of it is not necessary. All you want to do is just have a bet. They don't need to know all of this information. So today, um, normally I don't like naming bookmakers, but this time I will because actually it annoyed me. Um, I downloaded the, the app for Boil Sports and it was asking for permission to use my camera on my phone. And um, I just, there's no need. Why, why, why does a bookmaker need to see who I am while I'm placing a bet if they've got verification details already? If the account is set up, um, yep. it, it just does seem very strange. So really, this is again, you know, if you're using your own accounts and, and you know you're using your own connection and, and you still have those accounts, that's brilliant. Um, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. But it, if if you've gone beyond that stage, you, you do have to be creative about it because the technology that bookmakers are using is is um, it's improving all the time. 
um, you know, there's kind of security and their risk management as well. They're kind of more aggressive, I would say. The one just to kind of demonstrate this as an example is um, there is a piece of software called Fiddler, which um, Alex has downloaded for us, so he can kind of give us a demonstration. So if you go onto any site, um, basically, well, we'll, we'll show you on the screen sort of how it works, but it will kind of tell you, um, you know, what what requests are being made, what this website is trying to track. It gives you an insight into every time you click on something on the internet, um, what's kind of happening in the background. So yeah, yeah maybe if you want to kind of show the. All right, here we go. So. Part. We are going into uh, Fiddler here, as you can see. And uh, Alex, we'll, we'll kind of post up these links as well at the end if you wanted to download any of the software. It, it is free, this Fiddler Classic as well. So, um, right, so at the moment, if you can see on the left-hand side, um, again, I don't know all the technical terms for all this, but you can see some sort of requests coming in there. Um, it looks kind of you know, fairly quiet. There's a few requests, you know, pinging to you see one for Pace, Facebook and for for Bing there as well, yeah. So Alex, let's say you wanted to go into your your favourite bookie site, play some UFC bets. Um, you know, before you log in, we'll see what happens. So if you use Chrome, for example, you might want to do this. Um, actually, a side note as well is kind of considering what browsers you use. So you will find that you know different browsers have sort of different advantages. Um, you can also tweak your security settings on the browser. But I think, as we mentioned in a podcast earlier, and the aim of this is to kind of say that the more you do to hide yourself um, now, um, the more suspicious you do look. So it is really a balancing act sometimes. So you, you could hide lots of information about yourself using VPNs, using incognito mode on your browser, for example, but that will also raise flags. So let's say, so Alex has gone here to Ladbrokes. He's on the, the main page. He hasn't even logged in yet. But if you go on to Fiddler now, then you'll see how many requests have come up. So if you remember, we looked at this just a second ago, and there are maybe like three or four things on there. And now it's completely covered. And I can see Twitter, for example, there's a request going to see, you know, for example, is, you know, is this you to Twitter? There's a request for, for Google. Um, wow. Um, so just to be clear, this is stuff that they're not going to, you know, as soon as you <clears throat> open up an account with Ladbrokes, they're not going to look at your Twitter page. But, you know, if it ever gets to the stage where they're wondering if you're sharp or not, or they have suspicions, these are things that they can go and check out and, and find a way to your Twitter page. Yeah, so basically they'll check. No, let's say, so. so the reason for this to be mindful is, Let's say you've got a mate's account, you know, you've lost your bet 365, you've asked the mate, listen, can I, can I use your account, put some bets on, I'll give you some cash for it. Um, and then, well, first of all, you, pop, you shouldn't log on to your own computer on the same connection, on the same internet connection. But let's say you might use a hotspot from your phone, um, yeah. you, you might be out and about, or you've got a different device for it. Um, but at the same time, let's say you're, you're on that device, um, but you're also sort of faffing around. You're just, you know, looking at memes on Facebook. You're uh, responding to abuse on Twitter, um, whatever. Then, if it's in, let's say it's, it's your Twitter account and it's your Facebook account. And this might seem obvious to, to some people, but, but just, I'm just going to say anyway. So, if you're logged into your own account in your own name for, for social media, but then you've also got a bet 365 which is your friend's bet 365 on the yeah. same machine then this is going to you know potentially track that and it can sort of um you know look into that the other thing is again you know if you put it into hotmail or gmail and it's email for example you know and get your friends then that might cause an issue as well so you you, you basically want to try and and act and behave in a way that's like a regular punter you know like what would a typical person do they have you know they might have all their social media open and their accounts open but everything is you know synced up so um or they or you know to avoid you know any kind of risk just have you know let's say the bookie site and maybe on, on google um 
so yeah so this this fiddler tells you you know what, what kind of stuff they might be looking at and different different boogies you know go to different lengths to do this one example i think but you're not able to access it in australia but um triple eight is an example i used i'll give a shout out to mr brian Copland who uh, you know, it's given me lots of good advice. A lot of this is kind of information he's shared freely in the past. Um, and I'll, you know, uh, send, a, send a link to his channel as well. Um, yeah, so, so so these are the kind of things that they're, they're looking for. And, and it is excessive, but you need to be aware of it first. How might you avoid, you know, this kind of thing? So um, you could use like an incognito mode on your browser. Um, so maybe, you know, close down Fiddler. And then let's try again on, on incognito mode. Does it make a difference? So let's try and open up Ladbrokes. Um, but All right. maybe we can... In incognito mode. Now you're going to have to show me. Wait, no, I'm going to figure this out by myself because I'm able to do this. There we go. Look at this. I've opened up an incognito window. That is just unbelievable uh, from I'll, myself. I'll, Let I'll, me just I'll get you. I'll get you one. Can of we those. open up? Open up Ladbrokes again. Uh, well, yeah. Open up Fiddler first. Oh, sorry. Gone too early. Well, that's all right. All yeah, right. We, we can just, uh, yeah, so it's a. Uh... This is Fiddler here, yep. Shaw, okay. should I close down Chrome? Yeah, I think so. Close down all the windows. Just for this example, oh. this is not something we want to do all the time. If we close down Fiddler again. Open uh, her up. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, so we'll go on to incognito mode. Um, and open up that rips again, and let's see. Has this does this do anything? We go into incognito mode. If we put our security settings on, um, let's have a look at the requests. So, okay, there's still some coming. So it might not block everything, but I still think there's it looks like there's less there than there were. Um, but yeah, this this just kind of gives you an idea. So obviously, you know, this doesn't help you necessarily. Uh, bet, but you, it is important to be aware of this. Um, yeah. So, how might you do something like this? So, what you could do, um, you know, these requests will keep coming, but then, you know, if you want to use your own machine at the same time, have your bets on without having, you know, lots of different phones or devices, you could set up a, a virtual machine within. So, it's basically like a computer within your computer. So, you can just browse freely on Facebook or whatever. Um, but then you can open up a little window, which you can use, you know, just for your betting. So there's another piece of software you can use where to, to create this virtual machine. Um, there's a few, but this one's good. It's free. Um, uh, it's called Oracle VM uh, VMware. So I'll just download that as well. So once you open up this one, what you have to do first is is um, load, um, you know, a copy of Windows or you can cop you can get other operating systems, something like Linux as well. But I think if you're trying to log into a bookie using Linux, that's already a red flag because you know, again, generally more tech savvy people will be using it and they'll be in the minority. Um so yeah, as you can see on the screen, so this Oracle VMware, you can create machines within your machine. You you need a sort of a half decent PC to do it. You don't need like a top of the range one, but um, you know, just make sure you've got enough memory and, and, and sort of hard disk space to to do this so yeah so you can create a new um a new workstation here so alex there's a little button on the top next to the plus sign um so we can just give it a name and let's say we want to put windows 10 on here um and, and what you can do generally you can get the update for windows 10 while you once it's installed anyway so then you can create this uh, machine. So we click next here. And again, you can sort of play around the settings, but you don't need loads of memory or anything like that. You're just using it to kind of browse and um, on your bookie site. So that's fine. You could probably click, click next there. Um, and then you create a little virtual hard disk because um, you want it to be as you know, sort of separate as possible. Um, yeah, you can just kind of click that. The first option there, the VDI, yeah. So you can follow the options all the way through and kind of play around with that. Um, and yeah, again, you, you probably need sort of at least probably 40 gigs just because 
Windows file to take up a bit of space. Um, you don't really need it for anything else, but just so it can run properly. And then you can kind of create that. What we might have to do is a follow up because it might take a little while to create. Right, but now you can see you've basically got uh, you know a, a machine there. When it boots up, you can install this uh, Windows file. There should be some more settings, that, Alex. If you zoom out, um, is that fully zoomed yeah. out? Um, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, so, right. Yeah, so was... if you click, there's, like, three little bars. Um, you're just to the left where it says general. Yeah, the three little bars. Oh, yeah. Just to the left of that general. Can you see the three oh, yeah. bars? Sorry. Points? Gotcha. Yeah, three. Uh, you click on the details. Uh, okay, it's not set up there. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just go through here. There should be a settings button. I can't see. I can't see it because the trade plate plan is in the way. All right, uh, we well, can get rid of that, mate. Look, there yeah. you go. Okay, right, yeah, perfect settings. So there's a little gear, orange gear icon there, and you can look on settings. Right, um, if you go to uh, work. Um, sorry, serial port. Right, actually, the network. So one thing you can do is there is a way here. I, I think it'll be beyond the scope of this, but there are lots of tutorial guides how you want to do this. So you can try and connect this to a dongle or your phone connection. So essentially, it'll be like a new computer running off a different internet connection um, with no actual link to your other computer. So it's basically like how another computer that you can use to betting back to your original uh, I'm not going to too much hit on that now but there are lots of tutorials or you know again just send me a message um I'm happy to you know just point you in the right direction so if you kind of click through play around with a few other things so if you click on system Um, yeah, so it kind of tells you, you know, all the sort of the information about the system there. And then on serial ports. And well, one, oh, let's just have a look at this. Yeah, so this this will kind of tell you again what's, what's connected, what the ports are, the internet connection. Um, we, can have, we can have that. that, that you don't know this much. Um, depth, I suppose, and then if you click on USB, um, and again you can add a USB controller. So if you've got like a like a dongle, like a little data dongle, you can connect it to your actual computer, but the virtual machine can actually access it. Um, so you can you know use mm. the internet connection through there. So I've got one like a Bluetooth wireless adapter, and you know again it will it will go through. And you click on general at the top. Uh, it tells you. Well, did you want me to click on something? Sorry. Yeah, so if you click on advanced. Sorry, I lost you there for a bit. Okay. Another thing as well is you can kind of copy and paste files across. Um, I think you might have set it up to be before is the MAC address. So um, you can click OK here. Um, yeah, just close it all just and start on the, uh, the, the green arrow. On the top, uh, and then it will start loading up. But it will be like you know, there'll be nothing on it. So what you have to do is um, install an ISO. So on here, um, if you click where it says empty, hopefully that file's downloaded. Um, click on the little folder to the right of it, and you can add. A disk. Um, the easiest way, to be honest, if you've got a copy of Windows lying around on a CD, you can just do that. That's the easiest way. But if not, you can download a free version of, of Windows 10. So wherever you save that ISO from before. Right. Uh, let me see. 
Uh, oh, this one here. Yeah. In documents, I think. Hopefully Alex has cleared any dodgy stuff from his computer before we delve into this folder. <laughs> Wait, so <laughs> it's what I've just... Yeah. If you go into documents, yeah, that's it, where it says Windows. So that's the file we have here. So this is the ISO file. It's basically like a sort of virtual um, CD. And of course, it doesn't work. I think it might still be downloading. That's probably why. Um, so, but yeah, once, once that's downloaded, you can essentially put the ISO file in there. And then you can, there will be an option to, to see the, the, the MAC address. And this can change each time. The MAC address, basically, uh, although we can't get it up right now, but I'll explain it, it is really important. It's, it's like a device ID. Um, so you know, every computer, every device will have a different MAC address. So what I, I perhaps didn't do in the beginning was, I, you know, again, I use different internet connections. Or if you use a phone and you change your IP address, which we mentioned, you know, that's something you know, people do um, to avoid detection. But if you're still using the same device, you know, hundreds of times, the, the MAC address is going to keep coming up. So one way you can mask yourself is um, by chain address. So every virtual machine will have a different MAC address. And you can refresh the MAC address on each virtual machine as well. So you can kind of do that continually. Uh, and that's one way, again, where the bookmaker will look at the incoming information. They'll see, you know, who is logging in. It's a different computer um you know it's it, you know there's no link to to other computers um and so that's something in your favor as well um so that you know again that's that's something to bear in mind um something really important i, I wasn't doing enough of this in the beginning but um again if you're kind of wanting to take this more seriously if you're wanting to try and um you know if you've got lots of friends and you're a sociable person and you've got lots of accounts you know you're running at once this, this is probably the most efficient way to do it you know i know people who uh have like 30 phones you know trying to do all this yeah. stuff it's a nightmare you know <laughs> just just they've got their own phone shop in their living room and it's just um again that, that's for, for me it's just uh, i would rather have kind of simpler cleaner way of doing it and i think investing the time into just learning about virtual machines uh, is, is one way to, to definitely do it. So yeah, so hope, so what we can do, we can do a follow up once you've all set this up. So, but but to, this is to give you some pointers. You guys can download this in the, this software, um, totally free. Um, download Windows. You can kind of do all this yourself. And you know, again, if you've got a phone with some data, um, the data package. So it's it's actually quite a cost effective and cheap way of doing it, rather than having to you know buy loads of kind of crappy phones just to yeah. just to betting on. Um, you know, what is it like? I don't know. Here in the UK, you can get like a data plan for like ten pounds a month, and that'll be more than enough to um, you know, to get all your bets on. So, in terms of using the virtual machine, you have to. How do you go about connecting to a, a you know, some kind of? You can't because you can't use your Wi-Fi connection, can you? To to use these virtual machines, if you've used you know an account. So let's just say you've got a Bet365 account. Yeah. If I've if I've logged into my first ever Bet365 with my Wi-Fi on my computer, I need to. I can't do that ever again on a with a with a uh, with a virtual machine. Well, um, yeah. I mean, te technically, I, I have been told because I don't want to give incorrect information. I, I generally prefer to play it safe, but I have been told the most important times when you're. Um, logging in on, on you know, when you're creating the account and when you're withdrawing funds, I think in between you you can get away with you know with, with using a, you know the, the same IP address. It's not something that's as actively looked at. Um, but again, I've kind of preferred to just avoid that. If you yeah, any of sense of doubt myself. Yeah. Um, but in theory, you can, and I have you know I have done that on occasions without you know detection if you want is a better word um so so with these virtual machines then you need to like you said you need to you know buy some kind of data package that you can use how does that how do, and are you just like hot spotting your virtual machine basically because so that's one option that's one option you can kind of hot but, how it, but then what uh, do you need to um or, or could you just use your normal phone that you use to, to hot spot the machine yeah 
So you could you could use your normal phone data. You just set it up in a way so you use a hotspot on your phone, um, just like you'd connect to any Wi-Fi or you know, um, you, you'd click on the wireless settings on that virtual machine, and it should pick up and scan um, your, your phone Wi-Fi. And then again, you can PS of that. Uh, that's copy passive as well. So if you want to uh, do on the browser again, Alex, and I'll, I'll, there's, there's one other thing. If you don't really want to use your phone data, or that's not an option for you, uh, if you want a static IP, so what that means is the IP address always stays the same, which is also good for account health. You, again, you try and imagine you're the bookmaker. You want to see someone is logging in from the same place, the same location all the time. If it keeps yeah. changing up, again, that looks suspicious. So um, if, you, if you go onto Google, if you go uh, click on a website called IP Burger, um, you know there are other websites that offer this kind of thing. But um, this is just an easy example because it's one of the easiest I've found to use. It's fairly reasonably priced. Um, let's have a look on IP Burger. I just yeah, I'm there. So th this is one example of um, you know. Just scroll down a little bit, Alex, just so no one hacks your computer. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so basically the, the, it, this offers proxies. So essentially it's doing the same thing for you, but you can basically buy a rent or lease a proxy, um, you know, pay by month. Um, for me, that's quite good because generally, you know, I'm lucky to get a month on, you know, most accounts I use. So um, it's good to go, you know, again, switch it up. So you can get uh, something here, fresh, fresh proxy, a fresh IP. So if you use, like, I'm sure some of you use VPNs, um, you know, virtual private networks, and um, let's say you want to watch you know, American Netflix, but you're in the UK, or you know, you can't get access to a bookie in your country um, without using, you know, a VPN to bypass it. People do that, but VPNs are generally shared. So you're not the only person to use that IP address and the range is quite limited. So there could be lots of people using it. And again, bookmakers are far more clued up now um, to whether you're using VPNs. And some of them actively block it. So I'm sure you know, some of you are aware, you probably tried to use a VPN with, uh, for example, Bet365. And they're quite hot on this technology and they, you know, mm -hmm. they generally block most VPNs. There are a few exceptions, I think. Um, but even with those exceptions, you probably want to get a dedicated um, proxy instead. So what this does, if you buy a you know, proxy from them, they'll give you an IP address and they'll give you what you can do on your virtual machine. There is another, um, which you won't have to download, but perhaps Alex, if you can bring it up in the, in the screen, it's something called Proxifier. So P-R-O-X-I-F-I-E-R. Um, you can get this on a free trial and, and, and to buy it, I don't think it's that expensive. Um, but this is fairly simple. Um, I'll provide some links as well. Hopefully, if, uh, Brian Cochran has a few links up on these. He, he kind of goes through this as well, how to set it up. And it's fairly, you know, again, fairly straightforward. So you can use the information that you buy from IP Burger and it will make this virtual machine connect to this server every time. So you don't have to stress about. Um, Again, using your own Wi-Fi or anything like that, um, it will connect to this um, this proxy. This is also quite handy. Let's say again, if you're living in Australia, you have a friend in in the UK. Um, you know, maybe they have an account, and and you want to ask them, can I, you know, could I use that one? That way, you can log in, and the machine will um, again will, will basically look like it's coming from the UK. So this is also a way around it. So because let's say, Alex, if you wanted to use your phone data, it would still be coming from Australia. Yeah. So again, that so that might not be an option for you. But if you use something like this, this kind of setup, you can kind of get around it. It's kind of unlimited ones you, you can do. You can kind of create lots of different machines that or you know, delete one, change see, you know, go around. Um, there's a few websites as well that offer there are ways of, of um, getting this information. Basically, you, use, you, you can use your friend's IP address as, as well. That's a bit more kind of fiddly, tech savvy. I've tried to do it without much success myself. I know there are people who, who, who do. Um, 
so that's something you, you can look into but it, it's really important i think to kind of educate yourself on this um play around with it if you want to take your betting more seriously if you want to kind of sustain it um the other thing as well is you know the more of this kind of stuff then you lower your risks of problems with bookmakers in terms of you know asking for loads of documentation um you know to, um funds you know not being withdrawn um accounts being blocked all this kind of thing so um the more effort you put in it, it does it is long-winded and you know the, the, you, you end up spending more time i've ended up with all this knowledge about it purely because i because you need it not because i'm necessarily you know fascinated by it it is a dry <laughs> subject but um you kind of have to do what you need to do so um yeah I, I would definitely recommend you know just, just just trying to kind of play around with these things um and the more you can do like this you know the better if you're asking friends for accounts as well you, again it helps if, if there's someone who's you know constantly on facebook or twitter or has a very active web present and you know that's useful for you you know if you were to and they might look into all these things you know there are um you know bookmakers will do sort of soft checks on people so you know sometimes when you when a you know a friend might register an account in the uk they'll check if that person is on the electoral register if they're eligible to vote um sometimes the account will get verified just purely if, because they're on the register you know there, there, there's an address history or there, there's something there so um these are all sort of very useful things to do if you've got a friend who you know let's say is <laughs> I know, conspiracy theorist doesn't like giving their ID out online, doesn't have, you know, social media things. He just um, never uses their real name when they sign up for stuff. That will probably be, you know, harder. You can still get an account open, I'm sure, and, and, and do all of this stuff, but it will just raise more red flags. Yeah. All right, mate. Um, should, should we, is there anything else we should we should go through or should we keep it to a nice little half an hour there for, for people? A little, little taster or more than a taster, but and, and maybe down the down the line we can do a little bit uh, more if it's... It if depends. It's if you, yeah, if there's anyone, you know, suffering from insomnia out there, like, you know, you could go on a while, but <laughs> I don't want to torture anyone too long. Um, yeah, but I think, I think, but definitely reach out. If you've got more specific questions, but I'm not an expert on this. I'm just kind of, Again, educating myself, just sharing what you know, knowledge has you know been shared with me freely, um, and you can you know play around. It would be great to actually get some more comments about you know even more sophisticated things people are doing. If they're happy to share that information, you know, help each other, I think the better. Yeah, no, terrific, mate, and um, yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll have some follow up questions probably from myself too, and uh, yeah. If there's uh, if there's interest, we can we can do another one of these later down the track. But yeah, mate, thank you very much for, for, before, for everything. Mate, really quick before we finish up, actually, because we, we didn't talk about iPhones, but that's also another thing. Again, so your privacy settings on your iPhone, sort of location services, all that kind of stuff. I, without we won't go into it so much here, but look, there's plenty of stuff online that I would recommend. Just just you know doing a Google search, just looking into this. Can, um and use privacy modes to your advantage um and just try and apply it to how you do, how you're doing for betting and and i think the key thing going back to the beginning finding a balance between you know making yourself extremely hard to track but also trying to behave like a normal punter as well so yeah because um, you were mentioning to me that there's a way where instead of having to buy a new phone every time you get a new account at one certain bookie that you can just reset your phone and make sure that it's you know impossible to to track that that's the exact same phone you were using before is that correct yeah i mean um like not necessarily impossible but it, it's harder to track or at least um but at this moment in time you know the bookmakers aren't putting you know investing as much time into into looking at that kind of thing um, right. So again, um, with Android phones, I'm not as familiar with the methods with it. With iPhones, again, you can play around with your location settings, turn it on and off, um, and and again, that will give you kind of unique device number each time. Um, so generally, kind of clearing the settings, you don't have to reset the whole phone completely, but there are a few things you can do. And again, 
Um, I think what we can do is I'll, I'll come up with a sort of list of links, further information, anyone interested who wants to look into this further, um, you know, then, then you, can, you can have a look through that. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I'd be interested in that because I'm sick of having to buy phones all the time. It's a pain <laughs> in the ass. It's either that or virtual machines. So, uh, yeah, I think that would be very helpful, mate. Um, all right. Should we call it a day, mate? I think, yeah, we'll call it a day. Well done, Alex. You did very well. Yeah, thank uh, you very much, mate. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Technological whiz over here. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for watching. As Neil mentioned, and I a couple of times, if you got any questions, comments, leave them, leave them below, uh, or you know, DM us either. If, if I mean, I'm not, you're not going to get much out of me. But if you want to learn, you know, other things about this kind of stuff, then uh, then um, yeah, potentially we could do another another podcast or just another video about it later down the line. But thanks everyone for watching. Subscribe, like, do all that good stuff to keep this. Uh, this train running and we will catch you sometime soon. Thanks very much again, mate.